Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tim from OnlineTeacherDude.com and I help teachers get hired and get successful. I have helped hundreds of teachers get hired with companies like GoGo Kid, VIP Kid, and Magic Ears, and I have talked to hundreds of teachers who have given me their mock class feedback, and I have watched many teachers teach and spoken with lots of teachers about the mock class process which is now called the Certification Center. And I wanted to bring you this video based on lots of my thoughts about why you are failing or being asked to redo your mock class. VIP Kid has a great onboarding process and once you pass that VIP Kid interview, you are in the Certification Center and VIP Kid really treats this stage like on the job training. And so they often will ask you to redo your mock class and implement as best you can the feedback that they have given you. This is where a lot of applicants get discouraged and I see a lot of applicants fade away and not continue with the process. And this is sad because this is a great job and there really are just a few things that if you tweak and consider from a different perspective, you can really be successful and it is worth the wait. I'm gonna share with you four reasons why I believe you may be failing or being asked to redo the mock class. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the rubric expectations that your mock class mentor is going over in the mock class, and they are just basically checking off. Are you doing this? Do you have props, etc. So please stick around to the end of the video where I share with you those uh, rubric expectations. I do weekly coaching sessions with my referrals, and so if you are one of my referrals, please come to one of my sessions on at onlineteacherdude.com slash live hyphen coaching. If you are not one of my referrals and you would like to be, you can definitely get in touch with me below um, and you can add my referral code if you have not done the mock class yet. Please email me anyway and I will give you some tips to help you get through. But before we get into this video and the content, of course, I want you to stick around to the end and of course, I want you to watch my other videos as well. I create content related to online teaching. I have a lot of videos about the VIP Kid hiring process, some about the GoGo Kid process as well, and I would be happy to chat with you about those companies and you know, please reach out to me through email or through the comment section if you have any specific questions. Please subscribe and that is how you're going to be able to see my other videos when I upload. If you click that notification bell, you will be able to get alerted when I make a new video, which I try to do on a weekly basis. I wanna create content that is valuable and content that you're gonna to wanna to come back and watch. So please subscribe, I would so appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so the first reason why I feel that many people do not pass their mock class on the first go or why they're asked to redo is because they just don't get it. They don't understand the VIP kit, they don't understand the VIP kit process they don't understand what VIP Kid is looking for, and they're just not getting the VIP Kid way. And so, you know, each company really is looking for different things, but online teaching in general has some standards that you have to follow. You've got to have that background. You've got to have decent lighting. Remember, this is a visual experience as well for our students because we're not in person with them. And so I tell my referrals, it's not enough to just look at the materials that VIP Kid sends you. You need to do your research. You need to watch YouTube videos. You need to get a referring teacher to help you. You need to ask for help. You need to go online and look at how other teachers are setting up their classroom, how other teachers are handling the lighting issue, how other teachers are using TPR, etc., to help the student learn. And so, you know, it's something that I encourage everyone to do, to do your research. Don't get carried away with videos and lots of content on the internet because not all of it is accurate, but definitely you need to understand what VIP Kid is looking for and you don't have to look far on the internet to see you know, what is out there in terms of content and what VIP Kid is looking for in their teaching style. Remember that the mock class is not always representative of teaching real students. They try to make it resemble this as much as possible, but when you have your own students, you're gonna be able to curtail your rewards and your props to that student. Um, you may use less or more, just depending, but for your mock class, you really need to give them what they want. And as I said, stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna go over what they're looking for. Okay, reason number two is brought to you by my messy spare room. You might not be flexible. And this is where I see a lot of teachers treating the mock class like a performance or like something that they need to deliver or give to the mock class mentor and then get graded on 
where actually this is meant to be a, as close as possible to an authentic teaching experience as they can get for you without actually teaching a student. And so they really want you to be flexible, to be adaptable, and to treat this as a real experience where we don't know how the student's going to respond and we can't be relying on a script. We need to implement those ESL teaching strategies to the best of our ability based on the student that we have on the other end. So know those skills and strategies and don't treat this like a performance. Don't script your mock class. Be adaptable, be flexible, and be open to you know, changing the plan if things don't go quite the way that you were expecting. You know, for example, when you're correcting errors, if you have already planned when the student's going to make a mistake, but they actually get those ones correct, and they make an error with a different pronunciation, you wanna be really attuned to listening to that. And that involves being relaxed, being calm, and being confident in yourself and your abilities. So be flexible, that's my second tip. And this is where I see a lot of teachers, you know, getting stuck in that redo cycle because they're trying to script this too much and possibly write it out. I do suggest having, you know, some sticky notes on your computer, that's great, but don't get stuck in a rigid, plan that you can't be flexible to implement that feedback on your next go around with your student. All right, the third reason that I feel many people do not pass their mock class is because they have the I got this mentality. Now, the I got this mentality sounds like a mentality that you would want to have going into your mock class, right? You want to be confident and you want to say, yes, I've got this and I can do this. And that is true. But the I got this mentality I'm talking about is a mentality that a lot of teachers go into thinking that they don't need to practice, thinking that they got this already. For example, if you are a teacher of maybe 20 years, you might go into this process thinking, what do I really need to practice? This is a lesson for a five-year-old Chinese student learning English. And I find that brick and mortar teachers, such as myself, have the hardest time adapting to this sometimes because they feel like they got this and they don't actually need to put the time and effort into the preparation. And guess what happens? They get that email asking them to redo with a series of feedback items. And so my encouragement to you, if you feel you fall into this category, is to really be open to learning. And this is something that it can be difficult, especially when you have a, large, a lot of experience. You know, you might have a master's in education, 15 years of teaching ESL students, but I wanna let you know that teaching online really does involve sometimes a different skill set. And so be open to learning, be open to growing, and you know, you will be able to conquer this, I promise. So this, I got this mentality, is something you don't wanna have in the sense that you feel that you don't need to put the time and effort into practicing and you know preparing your props and previewing the lesson in advance. Okay guys, I promised I would bring you the uh, rubric categories that I have been able to glean from really doing this for a long time and helping hundreds of teachers get hired. And so this is what they are looking for. They're looking for ESL teaching techniques. Now, when we talk about ESL teaching techniques, they are looking for repetition, that you are repeating isolated words three times. They are looking for TPR, total physical response, and use of props. They wanna see a variety of props, at least four. They don't wanna just see cutouts. Make sure you have a combination of different kinds. And they wanna see TPR that is educational and instructional as well. Okay, under ESL techniques, they're also looking for modeling, that uh, you are eliciting full sentences from the student for error correction, done positively and done regularly, as well as a student output, especially in the lower level of 50-50. In the upper level mocks, it's more 70% of the student and 30% of the teacher. Okay, under teaching skills, they are looking for rapport and behavior management, from the beginning that you're setting the stage for a positive learning experience. They're looking that you are covering the lesson objectives, controlling your pacing, using appropriate classroom commands to the level of the student, delivering the content in a fun and engaging way, and in an appropriate way as well for the student, and that you are extending appropriately. Make sure you extend on the A slides, which are those application slides where students are to demonstrate their learning as well. Use extension throughout on things like the rewards, 
maybe you're teaching them a new vocabulary word, or oftentimes there is an extension slide at the end for you to use. Now, the third category that they are assessing and looking at overall is your professionalism, which kind of covers things like your appearance. You do not need to wear an orange shirt. I don't own an orange shirt. You can wear any color you want. Make sure it's casual, but professional. You don't want to show too much skin and you want to just be clean cut and looking uh, like you are ready to teach young students. They're looking at your technology, that it's working correctly, that you are under stable internet and that you have a working microphone, headset, clear sound, all those kinds of things. Is your setting set up? Do you have a classroom ready to go? Do you look the part and are you ready to receive students? They want to see that the position of your camera is at eye level so that you are not looking down at the student, but that you are looking directly at them. As well, lighting. Guys, lighting, I can't stress this enough. This is really important for your mock class. Make sure your lighting is clear, that it is decent, and the best lighting comes on you rather than above you or certainly not behind you. So lots of videos about that on the internet that you can check out. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Reach out to me if you need any help. Thank you for staying tuned, tuned? Thank you for staying through to the end of this video. If you need anything, all my email and contact information is below and I would love to hear from you. My referral code and my link to sign up with VIP Kid and GoGo Kid as well. And as always, thank you, subscribe, like this video, stick around for more, and I will see you soon. Bye everyone.